Arriving at Phuket Airport, you can already see you're on a paradise island. This is your first step to a holiday of a lifetime. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Burgers, beers, boys, done. Oh, and cocktail. Or where the nightmares begin. That flu yesterday. I've missed my flight. So not good. It's where cultural differences Stop. and the language barrier. Sorry? We don't need to go to the hospital. Can trip up even the most experienced traveller. We are not allowed to stay here anymore. <laughs> we would have to go to Bali. And remind you you're thousands of miles from home. I'm going home tomorrow. But you're in safe hands as the airport staff are just waiting to solve your problems. Welcome. I get it's gonna be another busy day for us. You've made me excited all the time. <laughs> So put your seat backs and tray tables in the upright position as we arrive inside Phuket Airport. Phuket International Airport's smooth running relies on its network of staff to work seamlessly together to deliver world-class service. And over the next few weeks, they'll be your guides for an access all areas peek into this hive of unseen activity. First up, though, it's time to meet the airport newbies. Welcome to Phuket International Airport. Every year, Phuket International Airport inducts 70 interns from universities from all over Thailand to get work experience in the airport industry. Excuse me, uh, where is the Malaysia Airlines? Malaysia Airlines, what time, sir? What time? Yes. We are training at uh, Phuket International Airport. Normally, we have a duty to give a direction and information to many passengers. Kitty Fong, Nick, Fiat and Arm are just four of the latest interns to join the airport. We can meet many people and many culture here. We can see many handsome men. <laughs> Lovely girls. All right, calm down, man. Yeah. But in all seriousness, the interns have to learn a range of skills during their time at the airport. When it's time, right? I have number three up here. It's okay. open at 3.30 at the uh, Phuket International Airport. And there are many airline codes to remember. We have to remember about this because we have to tell the correct information to the passenger. It's very hard for me to remember, but for now, it's better. <laughs> well, as they say, Fiat, practice makes perfect. The interns also get to use skills they brought with them. Even they work at the office, they're really like into it. They're really helpful. And they yeah, can do many help. things. They can speak Chinese fluently. Southern China Airline. Okay, wait a minute. When I speak Chinese with a Chinese person, when they listen, I can speak Chinese. They will talk, 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 speak, 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 speak. <laughs> Sorry, I can speak just a little bit. <laughs> I really like to see your feedback from the passengers. Yes. Like a smiles, yes. Because this is a new place, this is a new experience. Sure, we're missing the home, but we have learned more everything. We have learned about the new thing. We have know about new friends. It's the best thing in the Phuket International Airport that I have seen. Lovely colleagues. They are just very kind. It's very friendly. The interns generally spend a couple of months at the airport and then head home to continue their studies. Ten days left to be here. I will keep every moment here. I don't know all of the staff in AOT and all of the staff in the airport will miss me or not, but I always miss all of you. I really, really love Phuket. Oh, Fiat, stop it, you big softy. Sometimes you need to let them go because they're going to find a better opportunity. I mean, here is good, but, you know, they're just trendy. And I'm glad that they use this opportunity to enhance their experience. I'm glad that I can support them. Luckily for us, though, these four aren't going anywhere just yet. And we'll find out about other, more entertaining skills they possess later on. <laughs> Phuket International is one of Thailand's busiest airports and saw a whopping three million Brits fly in last year alone. And this one can't wait to get her holiday started. Look at her, running to grab her bag. OK, look, she just stands there. She 
Zoe's pet for life, I think, look. Zoe's here with her cousin, Georgia. Georgia. This pair are on a mini tour of Southeast Asia, having flown in from Singapore. They're in Phuket for six days before flying on to Hong Kong to visit family. It's Georgia's birthday and she's making sure everyone knows it. It's my 50th yesterday. Don't look at that, over 21. <laughs> my visiting friends here, John and Jane from London, and then we're on to Hong Kong after. In the UK, we spend £25 million on sun cream each year. However, it looks like these two forgot theirs when they crammed a whole holiday's worth of sunbathing in the first leg of their trip. And we've got burnt, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> two bits of bull, that's what happens, isn't it? You see a bit of sun, we think, oh, look like my models end up like this. <laughs> well, and being ginger don't help. <laughs> she keeps saying it's going to go brown, I don't think so. I think she's going to peel off like a snake and it'll be white again. So while their bright red skin calms down, Zoe is dead set on seeing and meeting some of the island's wildlife. I want to go over to, I like animals. You can feed them and they give them cuddles. I've never done this. I've done like the plane, so it's quite pushed me on it, really. But It's been experience. Cousins been on tour? Yeah, that's it, cousins on tour. We could have come up with something a bit ruder, but they wouldn't like it at home. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to check in at the hotel, go and get some pink gin, <laughs> sit by that pool and drink it. we get a few complaints later, but apart from that, yeah. Looking forward to uh, chilling and hopefully not burning and, you know, hopefully shed some skin so I can be <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. Later. Bye. And we'll catch up with these two later, hopefully bronzed and free of animal bites. Phuket International Airport takes its safety very seriously, with airport security, the National Police and the Tourist Police all guarding the terminals, visitors and staff are in safe hands. Supporting the full-time staff are a squad of volunteers who aid the Tourist Police, like Ian, who has been volunteering for six years with his wife, Cathy, who's been by his side every step of the way, that is, when she's not on a Segway. It's a new day at the airport, so we're starting our morning shift again. With our usual routine, we're now going to do our morning patrol. Patrols will take about 25 minutes. The airport is so security-minded that even security go through security. So far, so good. But usually this section, most people are just uh, trying to get their luggage and trying to get out of the airport. So now we are heading up to the International Departures Lounge. We're just checking for anything out of the ordinary. Travellers that look lost or confused, anything that uh, requires any assistance that we can provide. The volunteers are also on hand to help passengers who have delayed, cancelled or missed flights. Is your plane oh, delayed? Okay, okay, uh, where okay. are you flying to? I'm flying to Stockholm. To Stockholm? Have to fly to Greece, uh, and then... Oh, wow. Yes. The flight to Stockholm has been delayed for whatever reason. They, they were supposed to leave early this morning. Uh, between the wee hours, I presume it's between 1 or 2 a.m. Has the representative of the airline spoken to you already? No, we got some uh, text messages. Okay. Have a, if I don't see you, have a very safe flight back. Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ever vigilant, the duo continue their patrol. But raised voices at check-in have caught Ian and Cathy's attention, hi, so they hi. head over to investigate. Is there a problem? Can I there's, help a, there's a really big problem. They're completely misunderstanding what we asked for, and now they're telling her she can't get on the flight. OK, so yeah. explain to me what the issue is. She, she was diagnosed with iron deficiency, iron deficient anemia, yeah. which can cause tiredness and fatigue. Very frustrated, yeah. I mean, I asked them for just, like, a little bit of help. I wanted just a wheelchair in case I was feeling dizzy, and they just like misunderstood, thought that I was asking for medical assistance, took our passports, took our boarding passes, so that we couldn't even say like, oh, never mind, we don't need help. And now we're completely derailed, so. And now they're telling her that there's, they think there's some risk of her flying, which is completely untrue. It's, it's medically not possible. Unfortunately, what she had stated on her declaration form when she had booked the ticket, she mentioned that she was anemic and the airline took this as there was a problem with her anemia. Because she requires a wheelchair, that they, they've requested assistance, medical assistance. This is the doctor, the company doctor. Your doctor is, is wrong. But hold on Your a second, hold on a second. Right now, call to check with the hospital. 
We don't need to go to the hospital. She does not need to go to the hospital. Okay, We've been well, in this country for over two weeks. I'll tell you what, I'll yeah. tell you what. I need you guys to calm down. Let me have a chat with these people. And then uh, see, see if we can get, I know you're a little bit upset, yeah. We're not getting on our original flight. We're not getting back to New York when we're supposed to be getting back. We're on we're our on honeymoon, honeymoon, so. And they're doing this to us, this yeah. how it's closing out. Yeah. Angry, frustrated, and stranded in a foreign country, it's now essential that Kate prove that she is actually well enough to board a flight. Time is ticking on whether they'll be flying at all. Working 24 hours a day, the airport's 200 cleaning staff get through a massive 1,000 cloths, 10 mops, 4,000 litres of cleaning spray and 200 pairs of rubber gloves a month. That's why the place is always gleaming. And while we're on the subject of Luz, the airport is on the search for its best laugh. Think X Factor with Bog Roll. Oh, today it's an opening ceremony of the Best Restroom Award 2019, which is like the season two. We did it last year, but it wasn't this big. So today we just, you know, go big. We've been planning since last year, after we finished the first one. The concept is go clean, go green. So at least small things that we can save the world, we do. These toilet brush wielding warriors are now pitted against each other in a savage battle for the mantle of best airport restroom. There better be no dirty tactics. Dirty, get it? This year we want to engage more with passengers. So we came up with the QR code that all passengers can scan and vote for us, like which area is the best. Zhang's colleague, Jetterin, is the facilities manager who is responsible for the restroom awards. Where is your favorite toilet? Favorite toilet in this airport. No, Jetterin, your favorite toilet I in Timbuktu. Toilet in international terminal. Me too, me too. Yeah. Second floor is the mm. airline's office. Allies office, so not so many passengers use that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam, you've let the cat out of the bag. Everyone, follow me quick. Second floor, there's a quiet toilet. I'm so very happy with this day. My cleaning staff work together very well to make sure this airport, my, my airport, is the green airport. I think it's quite competitive, like other people trying to step up the game. The winner is going to get like 15,000 baht, but we not individually compete. They will divide it to four zones, so, you know, it's going to win as a group. I think that teamwork is very important to win this competition. So once the competition is launched, the Lu using public have to get voting. And if we've learned anything from Mr. Cowell and his competitions, it's that every vote counts. Happy scrubbing. Back with tourist police volunteers, Ian and Kathy. They're attempting to calm a situation at departures. Your doctor is, is wrong. But hold on Your a second, hold on a second. Kate and Sam have been stopped at check-in until they're able to prove that Kate is well enough to fly. As an anemia sufferer, the airline are worried that she'd fall sick on the flight home to New York after she requested a wheelchair from airline staff. Ian has been speaking to the airline to try and sort things out. The manager, unfortunately, the airline has the policy if they're going to deny you based on health reasons that they want to do a fit to fly certificate that I cannot force them not to do. But what I am going to make them do is make sure that they've got a ticket for you to go home on. This is just it was such a colossal misunderstanding and like the fact that they've taken it this far is so frustrating. Whenever you put a medical condition down, um, they're worried about if something happens on the flight. And I can understand it's an increase and decrease in pressure and cabin pressure. So if your hemoglobin count is low, it might actually cause for you to have a hematoma. I I yeah. just never thought it would have snowballed into not uh, being able no to problem. get on our flight. So we'll see. I'm going to try and make sure that they at least, if they take you down, down for, a, for a, a fit to fly certificate, that at least they got you booked on another flight home. The airline have been able to push the couple's departure back to the next New York-bound flight, giving them a small window of wiggle room to get the medical sign-off needed. The check-in staff have the idea to head to the airport's medical centre, but Ian isn't convinced. Yeah, but I don't think they can do a blood test and they have to pay here, right? We wanted to do it here at the airport, at the local clinic, but unfortunately the airport's clinic 
does not have a blood work facility. Uh, so yeah. we have to go to Tulang. They you can't do it here. They can give the feet to five ever, but cannot shake the blood too. Will they come and go to the hospital? Tulang. Yeah, okay. Tulang hospital. Right this minute, they the are making us go to the hospital so she can get a blood test. Yeah, even though the doctor's already cleared me to fly. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, to the hospital we go. Left luggage. So with their bags and left luggage, the pair now need to take a 60-minute round trip to have bloods taken before their flight leaves at 4 p.m., which is now in just under two hours' time. With the couple finally on their way to the hospital, things are finally falling into place. But unbeknownst to them, there's more bad news on the way. We've been to a very nice restaurant, uh, which we thought was cabbages and condiments. Turned out it was called cabbages and condoms. <laughs> you don't get a mint at the end of your meal, you get a condom. <laughs> How nice is that? Just like any other airport around the world, the final department you must clear at Phuket International is the dreaded customs, where the last thing you want to hear is... May I open this bag, please? And nothing gets past Pui. I'm working as a customs technical officer, practitioner level. My responsibility is passenger control at the green channel. Is it all food? Is that the, is that the bag? Food. Phuket is the top 10 tourist places in the world, maybe. So our policy now is to facilitate the passengers because Thailand, you know, promote as a land of smile as well. So I think it is very important because we are the first person they will meet. So if we are happy to welcome them, they will feel happy to come back again. Cheese. Why do you have to take a lot of cheese? My uh, brother, he lives in here. <laughs> Brother. Yes. Okay. His brother must love the stuff, but as it's all sealed, it's not a problem this time. In this job, you have to assess the people to know who is who is risky, who is bringing something wrong to Thailand. Is it your first time coming to yes, Thailand? It's my first uh, time. Your first time. Where is the hotel you want to stay? Batong. Yes, Bong Chun. I don't know that one. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> You have an interview with them, you have to read their minds whether they are lying to you or are they telling the truth. Okay, thank you. Open car. Enjoy. You need the experience. When you work long enough in this kind of job, you will, you will have your instinct. Yeah. But it's not just about being nice and smiley. Pui needs to be constantly on the lookout as a government law enforcement agent. This one. I just opened his bag because his bag is full of food and books. So it's strange because no clothes in his bag. All right, how many days in Thailand, sir? Two months and half. Two months? How many of it? Yeah, five. Five? OK, five is OK. Taking food into a foreign country can spread germs and bugs without the passenger even realizing. So when food is found in luggage, it's Pui's job to check that it doesn't pose a health risk to Thailand. He brings just normal food. He doesn't require the permit, yeah. So you I go back and forth between... I, between... I live here more than six months, uh, uh -huh. seven months here. Yeah. All I right. stay a lot of the time because I love so much to stay in Thailand because Thailand is a beautiful country and the people is so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> OK, God, thank you. He seems like Thailand very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Well, with friendly government officials like you, Pui, who can blame him? I guess every passenger who has been called by us must be a little bit scary. Because normal people would never be in this situation, right? Yeah, so when we call someone, yeah, they will be a little bit freaked, yeah, whether they are doing something wrong. And another common find in the customs department are vapes or electronic cigarettes, which are banned in Thailand. I'm sorry. Sometimes you don't have to speak at all. <laughs> but it's the excessive amounts of alcohol brought in by holidaymakers that keeps Pui on her toes. Open, please. Open, please. And down, 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 down. Open this bag, please. Where are you from? Uh, Sweden. Sweden? Lots of Danish beer. Danish beer. OK. We allow just only one liter of alcoholic beverage per one person, ma'am. Would you mind dropping one bottle, please? 
This is the warning. Just one bottle. Can I tell you? We are allowed to have four liters of wines per person from Sweden. Yes. Four liters, yes, and that's about what they have. But for Thailand law, every every alcoholic beverage that has percentage of alcohol is alcohol. So we allow just only one liter. 15% is no. wine. For Thailand law, wine, champagne, beer is also alcohol. We have to to distinguish them, whether they are really truly don't know or they are just pretending or playing victim. You have to be patient with it, and then the passengers must be patient as well. It's a big responsibility to protect the country because you are the person who who, who can guard the country. You need to make sure that right people come into our home. Happy party. I reckon Paquette can rest easy because nothing's getting through on Pui's watch. In the UK, we love the sun. So with over 30 gorgeous sandy beaches to sunbathe on, it's no wonder Phuket is one of the top long haul destinations for Brits. And three people who I reckon would rather be on one of those beaches are the busy, busy interns, Fiat, Nick and Kitty Pong. Today I have to give the information and help the passenger. Then, 1 p.m., 1.30, I have to prepare man. And what performance would that be exactly? I have the special opportunity for a make the show, for a opening ceremony, for find the best toilet in the airport. A performance about a toilet. What's not to love? In my hometown, we work just like uh, singing, dancing. And we opened a YouTube channel of us. So, as a seasoned performer, Fiat is taking to the role of choreographer like a duck to water. His co trainees, Arm and Nick, also dance with him back home, that is, when they're not studying. But now, it's Fiat's mission to pull them all together and turn them into one big happy dancing troupe. The dancing thing, it just came up because, you know, I didn't know that this talented trainee going to intern with us. So when they came and I saw many performance, so I think, all right, this is going to be another highlight for our opening ceremony. So I told them like only a week. And I told them the concept, what I want to deliver. So one week, real quick, really quick. Actually, I want to show them that their specific talent can also help the company. So the boys are creating a show to kickstart the airport's best toilet awards competition and help promote the airport's green mantra. We are so happy to do it. We are so proud to do it. The concept of this event is a go clean, go green. For today, we have to have some green color in my part of body. In charge of organizing outfits for the performance are Kitty Pong and Nick. We're going to buy some costume for yes. performance. Some we have to buy and some we have to make by yeah. hand. Handmade. And are you going to tell us what these costumes are? Our secret. secret. I set myself up there. Yeah. With only a few hours to go, the boys have been given some time to make themselves look absolutely fabulous. We are we audible. <laughs> Who is the most fairy soft dear mom? <laughs> She's <is> princess. <laughs> yeah. I'm the princess. The choir for jumping and dancing. Strolling along down. Yes, my son. Perfect. Village. And before we have performance, we will uh, change our costume. Yeah, but come on guys. You must be getting nervous. You've got to perform to the whole airport. I never worry about that because I'm beautiful and really confident about it. Oh, I guess that told me that. If you want to know about this show, if you're interested about this show, let's see together in this afternoon. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Make it happen. expat Bill, who's flown in from his home in Budapest with the common problem of, where's my luggage? I found it! Then again, this was never going to be a problem for our man Bill because he's been properly trained. I was in the army for 30 years. I spent a lot of time in the infantry 
and I spend a lot of time in logistics as well. So only my military sense of fun will help me navigate Thailand. I'm here for the adventure and I'm here because I want to experience a different country. And I hear Thailand's a great place to take a holiday in February. And in Budapest, it is minus five and snowing. Here, I think it's 25 degrees here. It's quite a nice change, isn't it? As someone who runs leadership programs for the business world, he's taking some well-earned me time. I want to relax completely, get super fit, and come back a little bit lighter than when I arrived. So my new girlfriend will be terribly impressed. I've only just met her, so it was too early to invite her out. The plan is, somebody's going to pick me up, take me to some ferry, put me on a speedboat, and then I have a 10-minute speedboat ride to some island I can't even remember the name of. I do enjoy uncertainty. It makes it far more exciting than the standard travel. And as I've never been to Thailand, except for Bangkok in 88, it's going to be a great holiday. See you soon. And as Bill heads off to find his speedboat taxi, let's hope he's got his sea legs. Tourist police volunteers Ian and Cathy are working to resolve an issue with two newlyweds. Due to questions surrounding her anemia, Kate and Sam need to get a fit-to-fly certificate to be allowed to even check in. The pair are now on their way to a local hospital for Kate's blood tests and to get the all-clear to fly. Oh, the passengers, hold on, the passengers now are already on their way to Tulang Hospital. They're already going, yes. They, on the taxi, they're on their way there now. I, I cannot call the taxi to come back. The airline has just called me now, said that they've called ahead to Tulang, to Tulang Hospital for the, our, our, our American travellers to, to go do their blood test. And Tulang has informed them that they can do the blood test but they won't get the results until Monday, so which means they won't, won't get a fit to fly certificate until Monday because they don't do the blood work on weekends. With it being a Saturday, most blood testing labs are not open, so the pair are unable to get the results of the tests, which is a huge blow for everyone. So they have to wait till Monday. No, tomorrow Sunday cannot get blood results tomorrow also. They are gonna be extremely, extremely upset, first of all. I'm gonna to have to find a way to deal with that. Second of all, I need the airline to tell me what the status of their ticket's going to be. So can you, can, you, can you find out what the story is with their ticket so that we, so at least I have information to give to them when they come back later? Okay, thank you. All right. So now we're going to have to find them a place to stay for, for the weekend at a hotel. This is not going to go down well. But, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Unaware that the hospital's blood testing centre is closed, Kate and Sam's luck seems to have finally run out. It looks like the pair's honeymoon is going to be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Arriving from the UK is Bob and granddaughter Katie from Merseyside, who've flown in for a very special occasion. <laughs> so we're here in Phuket for the first time. Um, and we've come from stepdaughter's wedding. She's getting married in a big hotel on Casa Beach. The bride and groom recently settled in Australia and decided on Phuket as a midway location between Oz and the UK to make it a little easier for their British family to make it over. So we're joining up with a lot of other family and some family from Australia and some family from the Wirral. So there's going to be in the region about 40 people for, over for the wedding. I normally go over to Australia to see the daughter and the grandchildren once a year, but two years ago it hurt me back, so I wasn't able to fly. So they've decided to sort of meet me halfway, but it's not actually halfway. <laughs> it's still been an awful long journey. And this little one, Katie, wouldn't let me come without bringing her. I uh, convinced my granddad to bring me so I could help him with carrying his bags. Don't let that angelic face fool you. This one is a master of persuasion. So now she gets to hang out with her Australian cousins at what's sounding like a proper knees up. I'll probably shed a few tears when I see her in a wedding dress. Her mum passed away uh, a few years back, which like sort of like just leaves me. So it's going to be very important. But we're having a rehearsal the day before to make sure everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing <laughs> and to get drunk probably. I've secretly got a, a picture of her wedding dress and a video of when she went to pick it up, but nobody else has seen it. I was sworn to secrecy, so Katie hasn't seen it either. 
I'm the only one in England who actually knows what it looks like. So, obviously that's the dress sorted. The guests have arrived, the father of the bride is ready, so surely there's only one thing left to do. I want to take my daughter down the aisle. That's what we're really looking forward to. Oh, here we have them, our two Brits abroad, who were in Phuket for the last six days to celebrate cousin George's 50th birthday. Nice, but I'm feeling it now. I can't wait to go on. After partying so hard, I'm surprised they even made it back to the airport, to be honest. So we went to, where did we go? We went to see Ping Pong. Oh. Now. Ping Pong and, yeah. Classy places, then. She and I'll get on out and I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew it could do so many tricks, put it that way. <laughs> we went Monkey Island and I say to you, don't smile, don't look at them. <laughs> and I'm going, hello, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> she's going, she's going <laughs> so yeah, shut going, your mouth. Hello, monkey, they're, they're going to attack you. But the thing is, you can't moan at the monkeys because you're on their land, didn't you? I mean, I would have fed them, had a chance. I got up on stage on my birthday, didn't oh, I? Yeah. I was singing happy birthday to myself. <laughs> to herself. But yeah, no, it was really, it was, it, it was good. Before the cousins arrived in Phuket, they were hardcore sunbathing in Singapore, which meant both were, let's say, slightly red when they arrived. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm like a sh I'm snake. It's all coming off <laughs> everywhere. And I think I need another holiday from this holiday. But now we're going on to Hong Kong. We're meeting our cousins there. The sun bath visits, but yeah, the tallest bar in the world, I say. I'm not looking forward to that because I've really had enough alcohol. <laughs> Although they're heading off for more family fun, it seems all they truly want is a nice hot brew in their own homes. Yeah, hey, what do you think I am? <laughs> not your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they want the next experience, another six hour flight. Can't wait. If it's worth going, but I, I'm looking forward to going home, but I'm looking forward to it. I just want to get home to be kids now. I don't know. I don't want colours with her. <laughs> so nice, is it, eh? <laughs> Cousin love and all that. <laughs> at Customs, Pui is hard at work searching for yet more contraband. What we are looking on the screen is the um, commodity goods, something that is to be sold in Thailand that is not personal belongings. Where are you from? Japan. Japan. This way, ma'am. It's not long before Pui spots an unusually large number of handbags inside a passenger's case. Oh my, Your oh bag? Yeah. Chanel classic. Mm. Classic or Chanel boy? <laughs> You're better than me, huh? May I see the receipt, please? May I see the receipt? Receipt. That lady brought so many high-end brand handbags, but the lady must come to customs first to, to declare and then pay the import tax. But the lady just ignored the stage and she just walked through the green channel. My bag, my bag. Your bag? How much does it cost, this one? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Why you don't know? Long ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about this one? May I see, please? Uh, long, 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 long. Pui's concern is that these designer bags are coming into the country to be sold on. Look very new, na ka, madam. Japan, long, long, long. Mm. And who in Thailand do you want to give these bags to? Two, eight. I mean... I mean, your friend in Thailand? Your no, no, friend? No, no. Thailand, no. After the interview, we think that those handbags are for selling or giving to somebody into Thailand. This action is kind of avoiding the tax from customs. This one, OK. That one, not OK. That one, not OK. This one cannot. Really? 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 Like, now I'm doing document. Oh. <laughs> you hurt me. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't dream of touching a customs officer in this situation. This lady is definitely not giving up. You didn't inform us before. You are considered as trying to escape from customs. Sometimes you need some patience to, to the passengers who are really, really stubborn. How much? No, how much? Just leave it. 
gone. It's hard to, to, to speak. When you have to see some goods from passengers, it is kind of challenging. By actively not paying the import tax, the handbags are confiscated straight away. So paperwork now needs to be filed in front of the passenger. Madame, come with me to the office. There's no excuse whether you understand it or not, because before you travel to any country in this world, you need to know the law of that country. And we'll catch up with Pui later to see if there's going to be handbags at dawn. Sawadee madam. When planning their Phuket getaways, every Brit wants to experience something different. Whether it's to relax and detox, see the elephants, or visit the temples. But before that, they all have to get through customs. Sawadee madam. Quite a bit uh, messy in here, Naka. Earlier, Pui stopped a passenger at customs when she found an excessive number of luxury handbags in her suitcase. She must now formally interview the passenger, as it seems that she was attempting to smuggle the goods into the country whilst not paying the required customs duty. It's annoying when we cannot communicate properly, but we use the technology. We have the um, translation program or application in, in, in our phone, so we use it. You just brought dutiable goods without declaring to customs. You are caught for these reasons. Are you going to end the case with customs or not? It's very frustrating, but we have a job to explain everything. But the lady has taken matters into her own hands and has called someone on the phone to help her with the situation. Hello. Sawadee ka. How are you? I'm good ka. I'm sorry, sir, but she just brings a lot of bags, which is luxury luxury bags. She needs to, de to declare this to customs, but she didn't. In the room, she was trying to ask help from, from her boyfriend and her friends from abroad. And actually, she shouldn't have done that because she was dragging someone else to involve in this. Actually, she shouldn't. And the stops will need to be seized. When we leave this country, we can't take it back with us? She can't. Having been told that the bags have already been confiscated, getting physical for a second time is not going to change Pui's decision. It was frustrating. We found many people like this every day. It becomes like oh, normal. We can deal with it. She did something wrong. She tried to avoid customs. So what's she gonna do? Just leave the stuffs and I will do the document, do the filing, and that's it. Please. No, please. No, please. No, please. I, I will not help anymore. The annoying point is the point that she just pushed her phones to me. But yeah, we have to be good. <laughs> we have to be kind. Halam. Her story doesn't matter because she broke the law. Even though she wants to plead me or she, she wants to make me happy or anything, she wants me to be kind to her, but it doesn't do any good. Yeah, she needs to be caught and then this, the good needs to be seized. Hi. Okay. Thailand's maximum penalty for smuggling is up to four times the total cost of the smuggled goods or 10 years in prison. So this passenger has got off pretty lightly. In the end, the lady surrendered and signed the paperwork. So we just let her go. I deal with the stress well with this job. But when your job is done, it is done. You don't have to bring it back with you when you're home. This is a good point of this job. I came with uh, my wife many years ago. This is not my wife. Oh. Back with tourist police volunteer Ian, he's helping an anemic honeymooner whose day has gone from bad to worse. Concerned for her health, the airline have requested a fit-to-fly certificate from a doctor before they can check in. Having sent the couple off to a hospital in a taxi, it seems Ian's master plan was slightly flawed. The problem was, is because it was a weekend, most hospitals do not do any blood tests on weekends. So after some phoning around, we found a private hospital in Phuket that was willing to do the checkup and do the physical. Um, and then determine if a blood test was necessary. With the result is we drove her down to the private hospital there and the doctor saw, did the physical, checked her vital signs, checked everything else and declared that no blood test was necessary. 
that she would issue a fit to fly certificate straight away. Even cleared to fly, the pair still have a 10 mile drive back and a mad dash through the airport to have a chance of making their 4 p.m. flight. We find ahead and the airline said they will keep the counter open, especially for them. And we rushed back uh, to the airport now to get them checked in. I mean, it's, we're really happy that you're here to help. I think yeah. we would have gotten a lot more frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He might have maybe gotten arrested. Yeah. <laughs> They've here. now checked in and uh, they're currently now waiting to uh, board their flight back to New York. Uh, basically, the connecting flight that they're going to have is the same connecting flight that they were originally booked on. So the outcome is that they're going to get home on schedule as it was planned. Guaranteeing passenger safety is paramount to the airport, and with the help of Ian and the airline, our honeymooners left relieved and with smiles on their faces. They're very grateful for the help that the tourist police has given them, and they're very grateful for the airline for accommodating them. And with that problem solved, it's time to crack on with their patrol. Back with the airport trainees, the boys are adding the finishing touches to their costumes, just in time for the 2019 Phuket International Airport's best toilet launch. Take it away, Fiat. If you ask who is designed about the dance, uh, who is the choreographer? It's me. <laughs> And the boys are giving the performance of a lifetime for a toilet. I bet you don't get this at Heathrow. We're so happy to do it. We're so proud to do it. And for today, we will try my best for this show. The choreographer has really thought of everything for this cleaners-inspired dance, using props to add realism. Stunning. He's also roped in two other trainees to tell the story of the happy cleaner. You don't have the confidence, you can't send the happiness to the audience. Such wise words from such a young face. do si -do to finish, perfection. And with happy faces all around, it looks like another day at Phuket International Airport is done and dusted. Just time for the grand finale. Oh, guys, you just cleaned that floor.